Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is episode seven of the Progressive Democrats of Howard County podcast. Thank you for tuning in again. I am the president of PHC and one of your co-hosts, Jake Perdet. Uh, welcome, my other co-host. Hey, Jake. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome back to uh, uh, another episode. Uh, I think we have a very important episode uh, uh, and an important topic uh, to discuss uh, with you. Um, and so uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, uh, Jake, maybe you can set the stage and we can uh, get going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I, we, we, I did not say Harry's name. My apologies. Harry Hobgill. Uh, thank you. Um, so, yeah, we are. Oh, uh, sorry. To- I, I just assumed everybody knew who I was. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're the, <laughs> Thanks the, for catching the star. that. The star, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Harry. Um, but yeah, so we are going to, um, I'm actually not going to talk too much because this was Huri's concept and invention. So I'm going to let him introduce it. But Huri has uh, in, created something um, that is very much common observations in Howard County that uh, now that Huri has sort of uh, given it a name and, and described it, it, it definitely, I, I've seen this play out. And I think a lot of people, uh, watching might play out, and that is, uh, I think Harry's calling it the five stages of confronting the establishment in Howard County. So, Harry, if you want to uh, explain that concept a little bit, yeah. So, uh, you know, we uh, as we were talking about uh, the the issue of uh, you know um, uh, censorship uh, in 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 Howard County. Um, it, you know, uh, it occurred to me that this, you know, this thing is even broader than that. And I think, you know, we can, uh, I, you know, I've, oh, at one point or another, I think we've, we've ex, you know, we have sort of encountered it. And I think, you know, people in conversation have described their experiences. And it was just to create some sort of like a framework. So, you know, to, for people to think about it. And, you know, I, you know, if you have, if you've experienced it, I, you know, definitely, uh, you know, let us know. So, you know, we have, you know, if you're, if you're an, you know, an activist in in Howard County, and uh, any county for that matter, or any level of government for that matter, uh, and uh, um, I think these these perhaps are relevant uh, to to uh, uh, to you, uh, you know, and so. You know this. That these are the you know the five stages of um, the five. You know based on the you know other other uh, you know uh, widely known five stages. You know like there's five stages of grief, but this is you know these are the five stages of uh, the, the uh, confronting uh, the five stages that an, that a community activist in Howard County faces when confronting uh, the political establishment and. So just you know, I'm gonna run them down quickly, and then we'll start, we'll you know we'll get started with you know with the first one. So you know the first one is playing nice, and you know we'll elaborate on that. Um, the second one is uh, uh, being ignored, uh, and we'll elaborate on that. Uh, the third one is experiencing censorship. The fourth one is um, experiencing being subject to discredit, discreditation, discrediting. Uh, and then the last one is being subject to threats. Um, so, you know, these are, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, uh, these are, we, we can put them, I think, in these nice five, you know, five uh, buckets. So, you know, we'll get started with the first one. Um, so the first one is uh, playing nice. And, you know, what does that mean? So that means, you know, if you're, um, if you're considered non-threatening or if you're considered someone, uh, and I think, you know, Jake, you put it nicely, you know, if you're considered someone that you can, you know, that you can be put to good use or perhaps exploited or uh, perhaps, you know, you're of some use, uh, then you're, you know, I think you're going to experience this stage and you're going to feel, you're going to feel very good. So this is called, you know, so this is playing, this is playing nice. Um, and, uh, you know, in the, in the initial, as, as I was, you know, as I, when I first got involved, uh, in county politics and, uh, when, you know, when I thought that, you know, the objectives that I thought what the, you know, the local establishment had 
uh, aligned with you know what what I thought would be you know what what when I what what I thought the objectives were, you know that was my misunderstanding. Of course, it's my fault because you know I definitely did not see it. Uh, but uh, I thought you know when I thought the establishment was working toward benefiting you know the public or you know maintaining trust or transparency or fighting for human rights. Um, and, um, you know, I was, uh, I, this was a stage where um, I was, um, you know, particularly, you know, there was, um, uh, 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 there was, there was no, um, I want, I, you know, I don't want to say bad blood, but that's like the, the way to, exp to describe it. It was, you know, everybody was nice, um, you know, uh, very cordial. Um, you know, and uh, um, it was um, uh, it was good. So it was playing nice. So that's the first stage, Jake. Yeah, and you know that's uh, and to be clear, these five stages. This is basically the reactions that you will get from the establishment if you go in trying to do the right thing, hold people accountable. And yeah, step one, they're very they're very clever. They understand that sometimes you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. So the establishment is not in the business of making enemies unnecessarily if they don't have to. If they can win you over uh, through, you know, there, there's there's different ways people be, can be corrupted. The the one people talk about most common is just accepting political donate campaign donations and getting financially corrupted or, you know, getting a high paycheck at an unethical place. But that's only one example. Another, you can also just be corrupted through social influence. You know, if these people all treat you really well, you're invited to all the events, you're invited to all the dinner parties, you have this social network and friend group now, and you'll, you'll never be lonely. And these people are all well connected. So they might even like offer you some some cool things, uh, you know, they, they, they bring stuff to the table as, a, as friends and as a social group. So um, from my perspective, you know, I came from the, the national progressive movement. I'm, I'm from Howard County originally, but I was, most of my political activity was when I was in college at Salisbury. So in, you know, spring of 2020, when COVID hit, I got sent back home. I got immediately airdropped onto the Matthew Moliette campaign without really knowing anything about the issues, about the candidate, about the people on the campaign. And what I didn't know is I, I thought I was being airdropped on like a radically progressive campaign. And um, shame on me for not uh, realizing sooner that that was not the case. But basically, I was really actually airdropped onto a campaign filled with uh, largely people very entrenched in the political establishment. And this is where I was useful to them because I didn't know any better to push back against some of the propaganda that they were telling me like that board of education has no influence over zoning and land use. So I didn't know any better to debunk these, this bullshit that they were telling me and filling my head up with. So I was useful to them in that moment. And I was a source of free labor for this board of education campaign that they desperately wanted to win they could see that I was intelligent enough and I was well-spoken and, and could do organizing things. And, you know, instead of just viewing me as a threat right away, they viewed me as a potential asset that they could try to manipulate and exploit uh, to take advantage of, of my labor and my skills and, uh, you know, use them towards uh, really perverse ends um, and, and for things that I'm, you know, fundamentally against. But, so this was when, you know, all these people, I consider very close friends, um, you know, people referrals in relation to me as like having a, pater uh, a maternal sort of role. Some of these people, you know, when I was going through hard times offered for me to live with them. Um, this is just to show the things that they will do to lure you in. They really will treat you really well when you are shutting the fuck up and not saying anything threatening and just, you know, going quietly along with what they want you to do. So for the whole campaign, that's how they treated me. And it was only the second, and I mean the second I stepped out of line and decided to um, start to criticize Calvin Ball for, you know, vetoing, ending the ICE contract. That's when I 
I had a wake up call out of that first stage of confronting the establishment and uh, moved on to some of the next stages. So Harry, what is the next stage? So I, I think you were probably catapulted from uh, <laughs> stage one to like three or four uh, yeah. because, you know, uh, the um, I think, you know, the, the next stage is what people fear when participating in local uh, politics. So, you know, I think it, to to a lot of people that you are engaging with in the, in the in the local, you know, like in the local politics, maybe they're in a commission or maybe in they're in a committee, um, in a county committee. So, you know, they they risk, um, you know, being perso basically persona non grata if they if they speak up. So they're also, you know, I think victims in a sense that because you know they they it's groupthink. If you if you draw outside the lines, you're you're going to get ignored. So uh, this is the next stage. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's what happens if you start, you know, asking, asking questions. So if you're, you know, uh, and we'll, we'll go back to, you know, why I think you catapulted, uh, because, you know, I think it's a little different for you because, you know, you went from working on the campaign to being on, as CDC president. And I think that, that you know, that was a, a whole different scenario um, you know, uh, you know, so, but the next stage is, I think, you, you know, you, uh, if you set, if you, let's say you send out an, you know, an op-ed, uh, or, uh, let's say you send out, uh, you know, um, uh, like a letter to the editor, uh, to the, you know, to the local newspaper, yeah. that's, you know, that's going to get less attention than, you know, um, some, uh, some developer's attorney, uh, you know, who is perhaps connected with, you know, the local, um, you know, former county executive uh, who owns, you know, who has an interest in a newspaper in, uh, in you know, in, 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 Bort in, in, in uh, Baltimore. So, you know, like uh, there, the, um, there's a way to elevate uh, and, and, you know, there's a purpose to it. So if, if whatever is being shared, especially about development and developer influence is ignored, uh, which is the next stage, stage two, then it will bring less attention to that issue. And, um, you know, um, and so, um, uh, so that's, that's an effective way of dealing with, you know, quote, unquote, you know, I would say insurgency, you know, quote, unquote, you know, like diverging thinking from the group think. So yeah. <clears throat> um, that's, you know, I, I, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, there was a, there was a, you know, brief, not a brief, but, you know, in a, a, quite a long time period where, you know, I, I experienced that um, until, you know, we'll set the stage for the next one, but, you know, in, in, until the next stage, but uh, there was quite a brief amount of time where I was, you know, in that, in that stage. And uh, I don't know, if, I don't know if you were, uh, but, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so... You're, you're right that because of the nature of my position at the time, being an organizational leader of the Columbia Democratic Club, they, they kind of couldn't ignore me. They probably would ignore me if they could have, but I had, I was in a position of authority. I had control of the face. You know, they couldn't ignore me. It wasn't an option. But so they did jump a couple of steps and went straight to discrediting and threatening me. But now that I'm no longer Columbia Democratic Club president, they have sort of jumped back to ignoring, which in some ways, in some circumstances, can sometimes be the most effective way to to suppress, uh, I think. Um, but now that I am progressive Democrats of Howard County president, and even before I was president, because I wasn't president until a couple months ago, you know, Nicole was president for a long time. But um, even when Nicole was president, that's when they pivoted. They're like, okay, we got them out of this, like, Columbia Democratic Club group that's really relevant, but now they have this other group. Let's ignore the group. Ignore the group. Hope that it doesn't catch any traction. Don't invite them to our Christmas party, which um, we're going to be at this weekend. Um, but, you know, just hope that they just go away. People don't pay any attention to them. Don't go to their meetings. Don't like their stuff. Um, so they have tried to go back to ignoring, you know, the same with the 
the complaint events against Christiana Rigby, you notice that they're not trying to like argue against it. They're just hoping, you know, don't give this thing any oxygen because, Quite honestly, I think that they learned their lesson from, you know, we can go to censoring and discrediting in a little bit, but I think, you know, with the Rouse project, they saw that sort of backfire and that sometimes discrediting, sometimes it's really effective and people buy it, sometimes not effective, sometimes people see through it um, and it ends up backfiring and bringing more attention to what they were trying to discredit. So I think that they've realized, especially with me, if they try to attack me, there's a chance I can spin it. So they they think the safest thing to do with our group is again just to ignore it. So we're we're sort of back in in that stage too. And also, this is you know it's not any particular order. This this is a concept that we created. So it's not you know these five steps in this order every single time. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, of course. You know, I think uh, that like the the stages progress based on your level of interaction, but you can definitely go back, you know, a yeah. stage, you know, which as, as you just, uh, uh, you know, I illustrated, uh, but, you know, the stages reflect the intensity of interaction. And, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the effort that's, that's taken. So, you know, going to um, censorship, like you mentioned, uh, the Rouse project, you know, like there were a confluence of events that, you know, that brought a lot of attention to the, the, you know, to, you know, what I wrote, but, you know, once I started sharing that and especially in the CDC, um, I think, you know, that sort of backfired because it, it brought up a lot, it brought a lot of attention to something, you know, terrible that was going on in the county. Um, and that's when these efforts to censor uh, you know, started taking, you know, taking shape and um, where, you know, all of a sudden, um, you know, um, the developer, uh, you know, uh, the developer that was backing or that was funding, uh, you know, this, uh, the Ross project, including the former, you know, the former uh, Democratic County executive, um, their PR entity uh, actually, you know, personally named me and, you know, and essentially started, you know, uh, uh, using these nice lead, you know, the NIMBY and, you know, these, these, these attacks, but, you know, the point is that no longer, it can, you know, that, that person cannot be ignored because that's, uh, that's, the person is having some impact in, in terms of raising awareness. So this is another important thing. So the, the the intensity goes grows or increases as a function of awareness, uh, as a function of how much awareness and how much impact that per, that person has. And so this was clearly an instance where, um, you know, the the what the 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 blog the you know which was you know uh, heavily um, you know um, re researched and you know used you know using original documentation, county documents, official documents, uh, it was, it could no longer, uh, you know, uh, uh, be ignored. So that's, you know, that's censorship. And, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, that, you know, that, that is a really good example of sort of the escalation of steps, because um, to be clear, they didn't just jump right to discrediting you, right? They, uh, it was a couple days between when you published your blog post and when they put out that attack. And I think what they were doing in that moment was waiting it out, waiting it out to see what is the reaction. I think their hope number one was either ignore it or censor it if they could. And they did try to do that. You know, for example, you I think you got removed. And and by the way, we just recorded a, a, a full length episode on on censorship on this step specifically. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, that episode which should be, yeah, so I encourage you to watch that episode in more detail where we explain some of these uh, specific examples. But, um, you know, I think you were removed from the Howard County, Maryland Facebook group um, for your, your Rouse Project blog. They tried to remove it from the Columbia Democratic Club group. So they did try to ignore slash censor at first. And it was only once it became clear that they, you know, they, they only control so many Facebook groups and they didn't control Columbia Democratic Club Facebook group 
at the time. So they didn't have the mechanisms of power needed to do the full censorship. So then, yeah, they escalated to discrediting you. Here he's a conspiracy theorist, even though a month later, all everybody agreed with you. Um, you know, here he uh, here he's this here he's here he's fake news, Alex Jones or whatever. Um, you know, these are the disingenuous smears that the people will use. And that, um, you know, that, that, that's a good example with you. An example, you know, when this was done to me is the fact that I was letting you push the Rouse project. I wasn't even the one saying that I was just not censoring you, um, and allowing you to post it. And that, combined with my advocacy on ending the ICE contract, that was enough for them to discredit me. They couldn't ignore me. They did try to censor me. They tried to take the, the social media accounts from me. They tried to take back the, the Facebook group from me, but um, they weren't able to. So ignoring and censoring was not really an option. Um, playing nice was definitely not an option at that point. So they went to discredit. They went for the character attacks, same character attacks, you know, here, if you want to, talk more about other character attacks they made against you, but the same character attacks they make against people like Liz Walsh, um, Deb Young, the, the, this is what they will do to you at the end of the day, if you're having an effect. And I was in that moment. So um, they couldn't win on the merits of the policies that we are arguing. They couldn't merit on, or they couldn't win the argument on the merits of just even the interpersonal petty interactions that were going on back and forth. So they had to resort to outright lies, character assassination attempts, distorting of, of situations, um, you know, the claiming that I'm stealing the social media accounts from them when it was actually them that tried to steal the social media accounts, um, painting me as a as a thief, as a as a felon, when the reality is I was the felonies I was charged and never convicted for were for live streaming a pro a marijuana legalization protest at Andy Harris's office. But they just say, Oh, you're a convicted felon and you know, you're going to steal the social media. So um, this is the really, you know, that that's actual like defamation like that, that that's even beyond discrediting. That's just outright lies. But this is the level of um, lack of morals and ethics that the establishment will go to, to really, take down um somebody that they see as a threat and i had to deal with it for about six months but here he's been dealing with it for you know probably over four years now um yeah so you know uh you, you mentioned uh you know the andy harris uh, thing you know if you if you were doing do, you know if you were uh in good terms with with the establishment you would actually be considered you know, a hero for standing up to basically someone who's a fascist sympathizer. I mean, this guy, you know, he went, he was invited to Russia, you know, uh, I mean, Czech the, Republic. yeah, so uh, as a Czech Republic. Okay. So, yeah. you know, like this, you know, th th there is, you know, the, the kind of stuff that the establishment like levies at him, the kind of attacks is, mm -hmm. you know, is, is you know what you did is tame to compare to you know to what they're you know the kinds of attacks that so my point is you know they when when depending on who you know who the person is you know you could be a you could be a villain or a hero based you know for the same thing yeah. uh, and uh, you know that's the that's the hypocrisy and the uh, the you know the inconsistency but um, yeah I mean the real this, real quick on that yeah. point. That's not even hypothetical. Again, these people, I was friends with these people for like a year and we were in that playing nice stage. And these people did know about the Annie Harris thing. And they did say that they did act like I was a hero uh, for, and it was only once, you know, now I'm standing up for ice detainees. Now suddenly yeah. they've had this giant sea shift in opinion on yeah. my interaction, but sorry, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. No, so uh, there you go, right? So that's this is how this is how it, you know this is how it works when when you're you know uh, um, I mean like like you mentioned uh, you know a lot of the issues started with you know when you were when the you know when you were starting to raise these issues about developer influence or you know the ICE contract or police beat you know body worn cameras and uh, you know then you know as it so happens the Rouse project 
you know, is, you know, coming online and this write-up comes on. So the, I think the goal was to sort of use this as a, as a way to ultimately, you know, uh, add to the discreditation because, you know, uh, because, you know, they, their goal is to label, you know, me as, you know, conspiracy uh, theorist, and that would ultimately, you know, uh, discredit the, 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 the points that were made in the, in the, in the blog. Um, and, uh, you know, lo and behold, there were three different blogs after, you know, I was the first one that wrote this up. And then, you know, a week later, uh, former county executive uh, Liz Bobo came out and, you know, essentially reinforced what I was saying. And then uh, uh, a few months later, uh, the a now defunct blog, Spartan Considerations, uh, another one called Village Green, you know, slash, you know, Town Squared. And another one called Hoko Mojo, um, uh, you know, shared the same concerns. And so my point is now, you know, I have three new members to, to my, you know, conspiracy theory uh, club. And, uh, you know, we haven't met yet, but, you know, hopefully we'll meet uh, very soon. But this is, this is what they do is, you know, so this is the fourth stage. Discreditation is, you know, that's how... Uh, the the goal is to you know make to attack the person uh you know uh because the because the point you know the points that they're making you know it's true and this is it's not unique to howard county it's just you know a, 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 a you know um a well-known approach you discredit the person if if you if you know that what they're sharing is important is is fact-based it's truthful um, and so, uh, that's, that was, uh, you know, that's the fourth stage. Yeah. And, and in some ways, sometimes be the hardest one to go through and the most painful, especially, you know, in my circumstance, since it was coming from people that I had considered, you know, very close friends like a month or two before that. Um, but even if, if you never considered these people friends, nobody, it, it's always going to feel shitty to see a bunch of lies spread about you not even by people who actually believe the lies, but people who know that what they're saying is untrue. Um, you know, it can be angering, it can be anxiety inducing, it can be scary, you know, you don't want people to believe these things. Um, so as bad as it can be, if you do go through this, in some ways you should you should be feeling good about yourself because that means you're really, you're really having an effect. You're really making these people scared uh, to the point where they absolutely cannot ignore you your public threat number one you know there's a reason they they go so hard after liz walsh and it's because liz walsh not because anything they say about liz walsh is true but because uh she's such a threat to them that they'll they'll say you know make up any tall tale about her um because that's the thing when when these people can't win on the merits of the policy and they never can this is what they have to resort to this is the only possibly possible way they can win is just by outright lying and hoping people can believe it. I can tell you, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, Liz Walsh, uh, and I think you also mentioned Deb Young at, at one point. Mm -hmm. um, when it was clear that uh, these two council members were uh, spending more time calling for accountability, and you know, the public hearings were very becoming very difficult for you know, the, the county executive and the establishment in general, um, that's when there was a concerted attempt to essentially smear them as, uh, you know, racist. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it, was, um, it was clear that that's this, you know, this is what they resort to. And this, you know, uh, we've talked about the, I mean, you know, I think um, uh, we'll, 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 just, we'll touch on this maybe, you know, in, in another, uh podcast but you know they they're very good you know so this is a they they're good at the culture wars you know using culture wars to smear people using culture wars to benefit their own you know profit driven agenda and this was one example and um it was very clear based on you know the the, the events that they were describing that was that would that would lead you know that led them to use to smear them there was no indication 
that that was the case. But you know, they're they were going to repeat it uh, long enough to uh, uh, you know, and, and and if they do, uh, that would shape the public opinion, and um, you know, the the you know the electors, um, and that would you know that would that would hurt um, their effectiveness on the money issue. And so, uh, yeah, so this, this discrediting uh, goes, you know, further, you know, out than, you know, what, how it affects, you know, just some, you know, uh, you know, couple of, um, uh, you know, community uh, activists and, you know, and like, you know, Jake mentioned, if you find yourself in that situation, uh, definitely you should feel proud. You should know that you're, you're having an impact and uh, you know, reach out, reach out to to us, and reach out to PDHC because you know I think you know there's a home for 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 you there because you know this is where we want to make sure that groupthink does not lead to. We just want to eliminate groupthink and you know make sure that uh, you know pu public policy is based on you know uh, uh, you know based on facts, based on you know based on whether it would benefit, you know, uh, the, the county rather than just a handful of uh, special interests and uh, the politicians. Yeah, no, and that, that, that's a good point that Harry brings up. That, that is one of the main reasons that we formed this group is to push back against, you know, this, this outright propaganda uh, and, and these incredibly toxic uh, tactics that are being used by the establishment and it's to discourage, it's to make an example out of people and to discourage others from speaking up and being bold. And, and what's so ironic is that they, while these people bully everybody under the sun, spread lies and propaganda um, and carry, you know, some of the worst people in the county's water on a regular basis, they will at the same time accuse everybody else of making it a, a toxic um, place to have discourse, uh, even though it, it is these people that is sort of driving um, these really ugly, uh, you know, courses of rhetoric. Um, so yeah, that's, that's discrediting. We want to push back against this. We want to debunk that propaganda. So yeah, this is a club for troublemakers, but really they call us troublemakers. Really we're, we're doing the right things. Um, so uh, with no further ado, we should probably move on to the last step, which is, threats and this is when they're really desperate this is when you know they they can't even say anything tangible or even make up a lie about you publicly so they have to actually grasp at straws and threaten stuff that may or may not be true and for, with me the threats I faced when I was not backing down from their other intimidation tactics when I was calling me democratic club president with the uh you know advocating and the ice contract is um there are also a lot of non-transparency in our, in our club uh, with the finances. And I kept on asking questions and digging and digging and digging while not receiving any answers to these questions. And instead of uh, receiving answers, I just was faced with uh, lawsuit threat after lawsuit threat. If I keep on barking up this tree of financial transparency, we're, you know, we're going to sue you for this. We're going to sue you for that. Um, and it's all it's all bullshit. They had no legal grounds to stand on, but they do that to me specifically knowing that I'm on um, probation because of the Andy Harris stuff. So they're leveraging, you know, uh, unjust charges from a, a fascist sympathizing congressperson who's, you know, one of the worst Republicans in the country, leveraging those bullshit charges um, with more bullshit uh, charges. Um, to cover up their own unethical behavior. Um, so that that's, and, and I'm sad to say, I still did push for financial transparency, so they didn't work all the way, but they worked it somewhat in that I probably would have been a lot more aggressive about it um, if they didn't do it. So that that's my experience. I know, Kiri, they can, you know, you've got a family and, and a home, so they can threaten you in a, in a completely different, and you're not on probation, as far as I know. So they can threaten you in a completely different way. Yeah, so, um, you know, I was told uh, by someone that, uh, you know, as soon as this Rouse Project thing was, was spread, like the write-up was spreading and it was becoming effective, that one of the ways that they will come 
against they will come at me was by uh, essentially, you know, uh, alluding to where I live and essentially basically, you know, exp like sort of disclosing where I live, publicly disclosing where Do I live. Doxing you. Doxing, yeah. So, it. yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, um, granted, you know, it's, you know, you can and go into, you can go into public website and find out where people live. But that's not the point. When you bring special focus to the person in that way, it elevates that level of threat. And, um, you know, lo and behold, uh, after, you know, a, a, pr a prominent developer, you know, attorney, uh, you know, sort of indicate, you know, uh, um, just uh, allu alluded to that on, you know, on a public, on a, on a, on a social media post, um, you know, sub there were subsequent, um, uh, you know, what I would call th thinly veiled threats uh, in terms of, you know, saying, you know, pointing to uh, sort of, in, you know, pointing to the, you know, uh, where, where I live and, um, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, to, to silence, uh, uh, you know, what I'm, what, what I, what I was saying to silence me. And, uh, I'm sure, you know, it can get even more serious than that uh, because, uh, you know, uh, this is a very serious thing. This is, this, this stage is very serious, you know, and, um, you know, uh, as much as possible, uh, you know, um, I, I hope uh, um, that, um, you know, uh, a good example, I just want to share one more good example. When the, uh, there was a referendum that was that was uh, 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 attempted after the previous comprehensive zoning, and uh, the attorneys who helped, or you know, who 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 participated on the side of the the citizens to organize the referendum, uh, they were subjected to several threats, and even to a point where their law licenses were being, you know, uh, were going to be taken away. They were subjected to incredible levels of threat by the local developers, attorneys. And, uh, and so this is a very serious uh, stage in the five stages. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I think that they did, you know, they didn't outright say your address given you know hints here and there of general areas where you live where you live across you know so they have dropped uh bits and pieces to sort of um dox you although as you said you know you can m many times find people's address if you're really determined enough but they're going out of their way to make it easier for people to do so which is really um not cool not cool at all especially some of these same people have uh talk to me about themselves getting doxxed and how scary it was. So again, it just shows the hypocrisy and the, the lack of principles that people have. But um, so, so there you have it. Uh, those are the five stages or the five reactions you may get from confronting the political establishment here in Howard County. Take it from here and I who've uh, had experience with the uh, all five of these stages in, in one way or the other. And as, as Sherry said, you know, if you found yourself uh, giving the establishment a run for its money and you've, you know, been in, you know, any or all of these stages of grief, uh, feel free to uh, one, join our club and two, you know, say in the comments or send us an email what your, what your story was like, what stage you're at, that sort of thing. Um, but you got any last comments, Sherry? Nope. Uh, uh, I don't have it. Uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned, you said five stages of grief, but. <laughs> oh, I said it again. Oh, my God. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, it's, I think, you know, it's the, the root of that is that, you know, it's, the point is, you know, these are the five stages of interaction and they escalate based on your level of effectiveness. Um, and, uh, you know, just to summarize, it's playing nice, being ignored, uh, sub, you know, being censored, uh, you know, getting discredited and uh, getting threats. So these are the five stages of uh, in the five stages that um, a community activist in Howard County would encounter uh, when uh, confronting the political establishment, Jake. 
Yeah, well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, maybe we can get another episode before the year ends. But if not, uh, happy holidays, everybody. Have a happy new year. Uh, sign up for our email list on hocoprogressives.com. Become a member, $36 for membership for you, $50 for you and one other person. Don't have to be a registered Democrat. Look us up on uh, our link tree, link tree. It's linktr.ee.com slash Hoco Progressive. You can find our social media website, no developer donation pledge, any, anything you may want. Um, so thank you. And uh, we will see you for the next episode.